Hey guys, Inspector Daggett here. Uh, I wanted to follow up with a video that I did not too long ago about asbestos floor tiles. One of the comments and questions that I got a lot from that is, hey, what do we do about insulation that has asbestos in it, uh, specifically that are wrapped around pipes? So I wanted to get into that a little bit, talk to you guys about how to identify it, uh, what it looks like, and then also how to take care of it, how to safely remediate the issue, and what the EPA says about that. So I actually have some asbestos wrap here on some pipes uh, on a home that I've done an inspection on, and I wanted to show it to you and help you identify it. You know, any house from the 1970s or before that has a boiler, there's a chance that they may have this insulation on there. So let's take a look at it, and uh, let me show you what some of it looks like, at least what this style looks like. So let's look at this insulation that has asbestos. And uh, one of the things that you're gonna look for is when you walk down, it looks like it has like this cotton or linen wrap around it, which this does. The problem is when you get underneath that linen wrap, that linen wrap is supposed to hold everything together. The asbestos is actually a paper impregnated asbestos that is below it. And this is where the problem becomes, because you can see that this stuff is very flaky. Um, I actually wanna to avoid touching it right now because I'm standing right under it. Uh, but it flakes, it powders up, and it falls. And then if you have a return somewhere in the uh, basement or you have a way for um, this dust to get in the air and get moved throughout the house, it becomes a really big issue. And if you go and just start ripping this stuff off and you don't have protection, it's gonna, it can do a lot of damage. Mesothelioma is a type of cancer that's caused by this <clears throat> asbestos. And what happens is the fibers get into your lungs and they can't be expelled. And then you get a cancerous growth around it. So you want to avoid putting this stuff into the air at all cost. Uh, that is the biggest thing that you want to avoid with the asbestos, um, especially with this insulation. So this is what it looks like. Um, and you know, it, it can be on the larger pipes. It can be down to the smaller pipes. You may also see on some ductwork, there are some uh, seams that are done with a tape that looks almost identical to this, except it's put into the form of a tape. Those can be an issue as well. And we'll talk about those another time, but uh, so I want to get into a little bit about how to handle this, how to take care of what we have in this asbestos insulation and what the best way to do it is. It's actually fairly inexpensive and easy to do if you do it yourself. Now, I will say that with a caveat. It's always best to have a professional who knows what they're dealing with with this, has the right respirators, knows how to handle this stuff. That's the best way to do it. But I know the reason you're coming on YouTube is you want to find out how do I take care of this myself. So. If you're going to take care of it yourself, there's a couple things that you need to do, and we're going to go over that right now. So here's what the EPA recommends. The EPA recommends encapsulation. So how do you encapsulate this? It's actually pretty simple. Really good quality tape, uh, like a packaging tape, and a three mil or better plastic. And what you're basically going to do is you're going to wrap this stuff in a layer of plastic, make sure the seams are very well sealed up and that uh, there's nothing loose, nothing outside of it. Now, before you go and start doing this, you need to make sure you have a good respirator. Let me show you what I use. So when it comes to protecting yourself from inhaling this, you wanna make sure that you have a good mask. And I'm not talking about the little paper mask that you get when you're doing painting or anything like that. You actually need a, a true respirator, something that's gonna filter on very fine particulates. Um, there's a couple options out there. One is to Go with just the face mask here. It's got the rubber that goes around your face. It seals off and makes sure that nothing's going to get in there. You need to make sure it's tight and make sure that you don't have any air coming through. A good way to do that, put this thing on, take a lemon or an orange, cut that thing and wave it in front of it and see if you smell it. If you don't smell it, it means nothing's getting through. You're in pretty good shape. If you smell it, you probably need to tighten the thing up. Now that's not a total uh, perf perfect way of doing it, but it'll give you a basic idea of whether it's working or not. What I choose to do is I have this whole face mask that has the face guard and then it also has the seal around your face. Now the thing that's nice about this is it makes sure that nothing's going to get in your eyes, nothing's going to get around there. And another step is to get a full jumpsuit. Uh, they have these full suits that you go, it's head to toe, and then you put this over top of it and you know you're good. Uh, you're not going to have anything left on you when you're done that you have to shake off or that's going to fall off and you're going to breathe it. Um, now, what you should do when you use one of those suits is take the suit off before you take this off. So you take the suit off, roll it into itself, put it in a garbage bag, throw it away, then take your mask off. Uh, I see people all the time take the mask off and then start to take the jumpsuit off and you can still inhale some stuff. So that's a better way of doing it. So this is what I choose to use. Uh, this is a much better system than the other one for me because it covers the whole uh, face and I've got 
you know, this all set up here so that I don't get anything in my eyes. They don't fog up because they're two separate pieces and they work pretty well. So you can see there, um, I got that run done. I just did about a 20 foot run, uh, maybe 18 feet. So what you do is you cut this plastic so that it's gonna wrap around and overlap, you know, a good three, four inches. Uh, start on one end, lock that down, take it to the other end, start it, wrap it over, and then just run your tape down uh, the seam that you make. You'll probably, before you wanna run that seam, you wanna pull everything nice and tight, about every three, four feet, tape the uh, seam together and then go and make a run. Anytime you have something like this where it's going to have a, a penetration, what you want to do is just take that fold and make the fold right there and then tape both sides of it and make sure you tape up everything. You may have to do a plastic patch just to cut around and patch over top of it um, to take care of that. And then I'm going to show you how to do junctions in the pipe. So with these unions, these junctions, what you do is you make a little saddle. So that piece gets cut like this, and then you make a little flap on the other side. I'll show you how this goes up. And that's basically it. Not a very complicated job, but a job that you have to make sure you're taking the proper precautions to not get any of this dust in the air and not inhale any of this dust. So, a little bit of a recap. Just make sure that when you put this plastic on, you're getting those seams uh, nice and solid. If you want to double up the tape, that's fine. If you're not sure if this plastic is thick enough for you, you're not comfortable with it, put a second layer on. Once you get one on, it's a lot easier to get the second one on. Uh, another thing that you might consider doing is create a negative pressure situation and put a box fan in a window, cardboard up the edges to seal it up, put some HVAC filters in front of it and then have that air blowing out so that it pulls any dust and anything that's going to be put into the air into those filters and it doesn't get anything throughout your house. Now again, my recommendation is that if you have this around your pipes that you're getting a professional company to come out and wrap the pipes and seal them off just because they have all the equipment that they need, they've done it before they know what they're doing. If you're going to tackle it yourself, be very careful to make sure you use the proper respirator, that it's sealed, that you test it to make sure it's sealed, and you're not allowing any of this stuff to get in the air, but you're not disturbing it as you put on the plastic. So I hope this is a helpful video. Uh, please like, share, and uh, if you could subscribe to the channel, we'll have more videos coming out on other topics. And if there's ever a topic that you'd like to have discussed, feel free to send me a message uh, either in the comments or directly, and we'd love to tackle that for you. Thank you.